Hi. Hi. In this video, we are going to look at introduction to theory of computation, definition, why we should learn and what is the motivation, history of theory of computation, why it is important, what are all the applications of this uh, learning or these concepts, this all I am going to cover in this video. Keep watching. Why should we study this subject? That should be the question. Any kind of learner, they first tend to ask this question. Theory of computation, otherwise termed as formal languages and automata theory, is a foundational subject for understanding compiler, also designing a compiler. If any one of you in near future interested to develop a new programming language, then this is the only subject or this is one of the subject will be helping you to design a new programming language depending upon the application or societal need or depending upon the computing uh, necessity but it is not limited to it theory of computation or formal languages or automata theory widely used in artificial intelligence natural language processing information security system software neural network and many more I can say almost the entire computer science or computing operations requires the need of theory of computation. Text processor, text editor, all the on, uh, all the programming language, IDE, integrated development environment, everywhere the concept of theory of computation is used. And even for dictionary, grammar check, spell check of Microsoft word or google doc everywhere the concept called regular expression that is one of the part or component of theory of computation it is useful and it is applied so with that note let us start with the history of theory of computation it is our primary duty to show our gratitude to all the inventors of uh, the modern day computing device called a laptop or PC or any kind of computing machines. So that is a good way to start to learn any subject. Let us recap and recognize the contributions of great scientists. History of theory of computation. Normally, people are so excited by the wonders of computing technology, looking at entertainment field, looking at scientific field, uh, scientific advancement is going more, it is uh, uh, NASA's computation, we, without the computer almost we can say none of the field can survive in these days, so but we, we are wondering about all its advancement. We need to learn the underlying concepts or underlying mathematics that is what this subject is all about. Let us understand the intellectual contents of theory of computation. The first contributor or the scientist's name is David Hilbert. He started producing the concept called a decision problem. It is in short or it is a German etymology of this word is uh, from German. Ernst Young's problem, Ernst Young's problem. So this is the problem he started proposing to this world through computing machine. What and all possible to decide how the machine can take decision whether the given input is right or wrong, whether the given image is uh, belongs to this category or not, whether the given formula is true or not, whether the given facts and postulates are uh, true or false. Some kind of decision it is possible to make or it is possible to do by a computing machine that is a theory proposed by David Hilbert almost recent day we are using this principle decision making problem and there is one more great scientist Alan Turing he proposed the modern day computing device called the computer through the principle called arc concrete um, mathematics or conceptual theory called Turing machine and he also a popular personality you please explore he is the root cause for stopping the second world war without him most of the human race would have been destroyed and died during the second world war how he has stopped the second world war that is a suspense you please explore without Alan Turing recent days the human population may be much more lesser he is the only person the savior of second world war so that uh, uh, leave it to you you please explore and John von Neumann 
most of us we know he is the father of computer we can say he proposed stored program architecture how we can store your program and how we can compute how the program can accept input and output and processing these all proposed by john von neumann he is uh, said to be father of computer so next self replicating automata game theory this is another contribution he made and alan so church he has proposed lambda calculus and recursion the concept of recursion with a lot of achievements uh, the computing world started uh, flourishing or started uh, accomplishing so these are all some of uh, they are all the great contributor these are all the sum of uh, facts i wanted to put forth in front of you alan turing invented the turing machine and proved that there exists an unsolvable problem and also he proved that there are problems not at all possible to solve by the machine that is called unsolvable or undecidable problem theoretically it is possible to argue and uh, it is uh, possible to establish the mathematical facts and the logical reasoning and the deductive reasoning inductive reasoning but it is not possible to compute by the machine or computing machine in 1940 stored program computers was built and mckello and pitts they are another uh, great contributor to the world of computing and they have come out with uh, a concept called finite automata so through the finite automata uh, programming languages people started developing this is a kind of there is one more uh, two more scientist norm chomsky so they are together mckello and pitts norm chomsky because of these four scientists we could see uh, the existence of computer programming language so because of their mathematical and underlying concepts and the principles then later generation people started developing computer programming language nowadays we can see most powerful programming language specialized programming language general purpose programming language object oriented programming language special purpose programming language so many programming languages we could see because of this all the contribution and there is one more scientist called clean clean has proposed a, a regular expression with that it is possible to simulate finite automata these all the terminologies we are going to show, look at into the subject shortly and alan turing proposed decidability and halting problem norm chomsky proposed formal languages and uh, uh, finite automata and uh, hook there is one more uh, great scientist he has proposed intractable problems np hard problems what is all about intractable np hard shortly we are going to look at modern computer science compilers computational complexity theory then slowly evolved from 1970 onwards all the modern computational sciences now toc covers what are all the topics what are all we are going to look at into this now we can say the terminology called finite state machine this is equivalent to any algorithm which we look at in and around us it's a visual representation of any algorithm then computability theory or theory of computation uh, concerned with the classification of problem classification of problems can answer which are all the problem or the program solved by computer cannot be solved by computer computer can solve this problem cannot solve this problem so that is also considered under computability theory theory of computation lays a strong foundation for abstract or conceptual or theoretical or mathematical areas of computer science it gives you the answer how is a computer made to think how computer is processing and thinking and taking decision so these are all the underlying mathematical concepts or conceptual framework we are going to discuss automata tells you whether a given problem is solvable or not already i said can be solved cannot be solved so solvable or not then stephen wolf frame who is a leader in automata automata applications states that the entire universe is a set of states and rules and single conditions so how uh, the different planets are connected together on what state and what connection what interrelationship it's functioning so everything in and around what we look at has connection so that all uh, proposed by in the real world stephen wolf form purpose and motivation 
what are the mathematical properties of computer hardware and software we will be learning through this subject what is a computation and what is an algorithm is also learned from this subject what are the limitations of computers computers can are computing can anything be computed or it is not possible this all addressed these all are addressed through this subject theory of computation now the recent day theory of computation divided into uh, three major category or two major category we can say complexity theory computability theory and automata theory so these three are uh, majorly classified or the broader uh, sections of theory of computation now theory of computation is a branch of computer science that deals with whether and how efficiently problems can be solved on a computer how to solve and how efficiently to solve how to solve we can probably can say as computability theory and how efficiently we can solve can be said as complexity theory how to solve is a fundamental problem that fits into computability theory how efficiently we can solve that fits into complexity theory there are several models of computation in use most commonly xmind is called as turing machine turing machine is a modern day computer desktop pc with an infinite memory capacity but with respect to turing machine theoretically when we study it is termed as infinite memory capacity but when we look at uh, uh, the modern day pcs or laptop or desktop when we look at it is a finite physical property so nothing is possible to deal with the infinite in nature so it is a finite but the functionality is stored program concept and accessing of the memory everything imitates exactly like turing machine only the one property is changed memory is infinite in nature with respect to turing machine whereas in two desktop it is finite in nature what are all the models we are going to look at other than turing machine these are all the popular models we need to uh, consider into on the case of theory of computation one is finite automata another one is push down automata linear bounded automata and turing machine finite automata these all used in text processing compilers and hardware design and push down automata these are used to define programming languages and in artificial intelligence linear bounded automata is a multi track non deterministic turing machine with a tape of some bounded finite length so it's a bounded to finite length multi track so many tracks of memory is possible to access simultaneously at a time and this form a single abstract model of a real computer already we discussed about turing machine sufficient sufficient enough so this subject is one of the major consideration in the gate examination to crack the gate exam you need to have a deeper understanding of the subject automatons are applied in fields including design and analysis of algorithm web search theory of pattern matching sequential circuits theory of finite state automata compiler design theory of context free grammar cryptography theory of computational complexity data compression theory of information fluid flow snow flow and crystal formation chaos theory stochastic theory and the cosmology financial analysis natural language processing text editor command interpreter digital circuit design these are all some of the applications i'm bringing here related to theory of computation there are many more it to explore it to know there are few terminologies we need to understand whenever i address automaton it is a singular it's a kind of single finite state machine or any machine i am representing automata or automatons plural now let us understand what is all about automata we are trying to look at what is automata look at the simple analogy of cd player finite state automation for a cd player so we when we look at cd player has several buttons fast forward fast uh, backward and play pause stop there are several buttons let us consider sim for the simplicity only two buttons one is play button and the pause button and stop button so initially it will be in the stop state then we will be play uh, the moment we press the play button then it goes to play state from the play state it goes to pause state from the pause state again we can resume back to play state from the play state or we can go to the stop state then from the pause state instead of playing we can go back to stop state so all the operations interconnected circuit operations are established through this visual representation even before even the hardware design 
all the designers used to draw this final state machine so this clarity they should have what are all the interconnections among the different states of communication or transition from one state to another state so with this simple example you can able to understand what i mean to say automata this entire diagram is termed as automata so this is called automata now this automata consists of start state so the circle which is attached with the arrow mark all the circles are represented as states and all these transitions are represented as alphabet or transitions so we are shortly going to look at so the relationship between the state and the transition leads to the next state which state we need to move is decided by the present state and the label or the transition or the alphabet based on that it moves this is what we need to understand to imagine automata or analogy this is short explanation a cd player can be modeled as a finite state automata with three states stop state play state and pause state in the playing state the cd is rotating and music is playing from it in the pause state cd is rotating but music is not playing in the stop state the cd is not rotating the cd player has input in the form of three buttons labeled as stop play pass if the cd player is in the stop state the only button that works is the play button there is no other state which moves the cd player to the play state in the playing state the stop button moves the cd player to the stop state so you can be able to understand now what i mean to say the flow Di the following diagram represents the states of the CD player with many more options. Look at here; it is handwritten. See here, initial state. This initial state it will be in the stop. We can do only one option that is called play. Then play, we can either go to pause or we can come back to stop. Then, what are all other case? From the pause, we can go to backward and we can go to forward and from the forward we can go to play from the backward we can go to play so these are all the possible combination just think and imagine what are all the buttons we are oper operating from which state it is possible to go to which state so how the cd player or any musical player instrument is playing that you can imagine visualize and draw the diagram that's it now automata theory we are going to look at different computation model this is one of the computation model that is called finite automata in which we are going to every computation model has its own language or grammar to understand what is the basic of language alphabet and the grammar that we are going to explore in detail in the subsequent sessions what is alphabet what is grammar what is language among uh, these all we are going to look at four popular or four widely used grammar one is type 0 type 1 type 2 type 3 grammar type 0 otherwise called unrestricted grammar recognized by only the turing machine this grammar or this language is recognized by turing machine this is one of the finite automata we can say then next is type 1 grammar it recognizes context sensitive grammar or context sensitive language accepted by linear bound automata type 2 grammar it is otherwise called context free grammar it is accepted by push down automata type 3 grammar it is otherwise called as regular grammar accepted by finite automata our duty to understand in the forthcoming session one is what is this grammar all about what is this machine what is the relationship between this grammar and the machine or automata this is otherwise called machine or automata everyone is termed as machine or automata so look at this this is said to be machine or automata this is said to be machine or automata similarly this is said to be machine or automata this is said to be machine or automata so that's it now let us see relationship between all these grammar or languages we are going to look at relationship between all these uh, languages and the grammar number one recursive enumerable what is this language is machine can accept the input if the given input is suitable to the computation it works and halts machine will be stopped if the given input is not suitable to the computational logic we cannot assure whether machine will halt or not we cannot assure those kind of problems are termed as recursively enumerable then second one 
recursive language this is superset then rest all subset we are going to discuss through this uh, Venn diagram you can able to understand clearly recursive language upon the given input it will the machine will stop whatever may be the case the input is true or false whatever may be the case it is possible to stop the machine so that is called decidable language that is recursive language next language is context sensitive within this the subset is context free within the subset is deterministic context free within the subset is called regular language now let us look at the theory for this every part of the grammar or the language a language is decidable or recursive when we can say this second category recursive machine can be constructed to accept the strings which are part of a language and reject others it will decide it will halt machine is assured to halt a number is a prime or not it is a decidable problem whether the if given input which you are giving three yes it is a prime the machine will halt if you try to give five it will halt if you try to give six although it does it, it is not a prime the machine will halt that kind of problems are uh, kind of computation is categorized into decidable problems or recursive problems next is semi decidable or recursively enumerable if a turing machine can be constructed to accept, accept strings which are part of the language and halt it accepts and halts suppose the given input is not the part of the language or not the part of the algorithm that is what for a simplicity i am telling not the part of an algorithm or the logic then it may halt may not halt loop forever we cannot assure if the given input is not be not suitable to the established logic what would be the behavior of the machine nobody can predict such kind of problems are called as semi decidable or recursively enumerable a problem is undecidable or unsolvable the next category we cannot construct an algorithm and turing machine which can give either yes or no it is not at all possible and not even partly see look at the semi decidable partly for yes category it works no category it is clueless similarly undecidable problem if we look at it is clueless we cannot establish a computational algorithm either for s case or for no case with that short introduction i am completing introduction to theory of computation hope you may be enjoying watching this video thank you for watching